Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of our UI UX review series. Today we are going to look at a very complex medical system that is used in Uganda. It has an enormous number of pages, forms and user cases. Our goal here is to simplify the interface, provide a better user experience and clean it up a bit since right now it's drastically overloaded. At the same time, we have some limitations. We are not in Uganda and we cannot talk to the end users about how they use it, so the redesign process will be based on general principles that work in most cases. Besides, we will see some violations of the UX principles and how to fix them. So, what we have here is header, breadcrumbs, patient info, and the form. The form is divided into tabs, and here is the submit button. Before we get to redesign, let me show you a couple of design laws that will be handy. First is the proximity law. Objects that are near or approximate to each other tend to be grouped. Here we can see a group of squares. And now you can easily distinguish two groups. This simple thing is crucial in interfaces. Let's see how it is violated in this case. There are a lot of logically related groups, however, they are way too close to each other. There is no clear separation between them, in other words, not enough room between these groups. Also, let's take a closer look at this block. Is direction to residence related to passion categories? I'm not sure. Or is the relationship to the client related to the EID care? That's what the proximity law is about. The next thing is how to control user attention. Let's get back to our squares. How can we direct user attention to one of them? Simply by changing color, size, shape or distance. Let's return to our system. So the problem is that there is nothing to focus on. All elements are different. What makes the situation worse is that some of them have different colors. To sum up, there is no consistency, the proximity principle is violated, it is hard to focus on something, and the interface is overloaded. Now let's dive into the redesign process. I will start with a clean page and break it down into a few big groups. The header, breadcrumbs, passion info, and the form. We might change it later. So let's begin with the header. What problems do we have here? First, I'm not sure if it should be black since black takes some attention and looks heavy so I will keep it white for now. Here we have three links – account, clinic and logout. However, the account dropdown consists only of one link. We can hide the logout link under the dropdown since it's not the most common thing the user will do. Also, we may notice that the colors of links are different and we have a weird green border here. So what I would do is, I would have two links with the same color, remove the green border, remove the clinic icon since I'm not sure if it's relevant, change the account icon just because this one is widely used and looks a bit dull. Now, in the logo section we have an obvious problem with paddings. Let's increase them and move everything a little bit closer together. Now let's work on the breadcrumbs a bit. Let's remove the white line since it's barely noticeable but still makes some noise. 
and make the typography more consistent. For now, I'll keep all the colors as shades of gray. Later on, we can change it. The Passion section. For now, I will skip it and display the passion name only, because I'm not sure if the layout will be the same. And finally, let's get to the most intriguing part – the form. Let's take a look at the number of fields we have in four tabs. Immense. Where to begin? Let's start with the Submit button. This is very harmful UX. When you click on it, it submits the hidden inputs under every tab. The reliable way of doing forms is when we have some inputs and the Submit button below. But let's admit, we cannot put all the form inputs in one place. Even if we had navigation, the form would take several screens. Besides, we have such functionality as adding new rows. It's a very fragile technique to send such a big amount of information at once. So we have to break the form into multiple forms. And it might work even without making significant changes on the server side. We will submit a part of the information at once. Let's make a quick wireframe. You see, our layout has changed a bit. So we have four forms, right? Yes, but each form also has some subgroups, subforms, and they are complex too. So eventually we will have way too many forms. And that's all right. They serve different goals. Here what I came up with. This is way much cleaner in terms of information architecture. You can see exactly what forms do you have and you give users only some part of inputs to fill at once. No scary forms. Now let's get to the inputs. First, let's see what's wrong here. Some of the labels have semicolons, some don't. Hanging labels, inconsistent spacing, violation of the proximity law, alignment issues, Multicolon forms are generally considered a bad practice. So we're going to make it simple. Remove semicolons as they are just a visual noise. Remove hanging labels since we don't know what they mean. The developer might add them later to our new design. Have consistent spacing between inputs and their labels. Put everything under one column. Put the submit button at the end. And here what we have now. Looks much cleaner. But we can improve something. Right now we have a few cards that get the same amount of focus. A simple trick to shift the focus to the form is to de-emphasize other blocks. So let's remove the card from navigation to make the form stand out a little bit more. We have another problem – white space. Even though the form becomes easier to use, we can improve it further and try the next thing. We can make a column having the description of each group. We don't know yet if it will work, however, this is how we design – by iterations. Now let's separate the cut header and move the headline from the patient name to where it belongs to. Now let's get back to the patient section. The problem is that the horizontal layout is not the best choice when you need to display some profile information. Usually, you end up with some empty space. If we had more lines to put here, the block would grow, as well as the white space. So I thought that we have quite a lot of space for the form and the subheaders occupy too much space. How about moving the subheaders so that they are in one column with the inputs and move the patient info at the third column? When filling a large form, the user will always see the patient info. I assume that the profile will have fixed positioning, which means that it will always be on the screen, same as navigation. We can put as much information as we need here. Notice that I de-emphasized labels. The avatar helps identifying patient's gender, 
Later on, we can place the photo of the patient instead. The Edit and Save Notes buttons are secondary, so I made them outlined. In the future, the right side bar can have more cards, for example, the allergies that the patient has. Another advantage of this approach is that we have enough space for our data in most cases. If the name doesn't fit, we can always put three dots at the end. When you hover on it, you will see the full name, while such fields as address can be multi-line. So this is a universal pattern – label and value. Also, let's de-emphasize the breadcrumbs block. Ok, so you may have noticed that everything looks a bit grey. And also, I missed a lot of things like calendar icons for the date pickers, validation and other stuff. This was done on purpose because it's way more important to figure out at first how to place everything. Then we can play with colors and branding, add hints, icons, style header dropdown, and everything else. But this is out of the scope of the video. So guys, let me know in the comments whether you liked it or not, and why. I would appreciate any feedback. If I see that it's interesting for my audience, I'll make a second video where I will redesign the rest of the forms, this time in detail.